Hey guys, I was just hovering over Bethlehem and they put the Lord in a manger. It's the cutest thing. Come on, get in line. We're about to make the announcement to those shepherds. We're announcing the greatest moment in history to shepherds? Yes. It's dark down there. They'll never see us. We've got it covered. Are the lights set? Oh yeah. Are you ready with the announcement? I bring you... Hold it. That'll scare them. Okay, uh... Fear not! I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all the people. Today, in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. Okay, choir, it may not be a big audience, but it's a big message. The birth of Jesus Christ was announced to common shepherds. While he was here, Jesus told us that he would return for anyone who believes in him. If Christ came back tonight, would you be ready? What was that? One of the sheep. Relax. Nothing ever happens out here. A message from Lifeline Productions. 1-800-52-FUNNY at lifelinepro.com. Good morning. This is Radio Good News. The goal of this program is to draw all people to the love of Jesus Christ. I want everyone to know and experience the fruit of the Holy Spirit. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, generosity, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Those are key to a Holy Spirit-filled and successful Christian life. I will focus on God's love because God's love is wonderful. I'm John Thornton. You can write to me at Radio Good News, P.O. Box 1722, Sioux Falls, South Dakota, 57101. There's now a sponsorship opportunity available, so if you or your business want to sponsor Radio Good News, drop me a note. I'll be reading from the Bible, the New Revised Standard Version, because that is God's word to us in our modern English language. Let's begin today with Psalm 81. Sing aloud to God our strength. Shout for joy to the God of Jacob. Raise a song, sound the tambourine, the sweet lyre with the harp. Blow the trumpet at the new moon, at the full moon on our festal day. For it is a statute for Israel, an ordinance of the God of Jacob. He made it a decree in Joseph when he went out over the land of Egypt. I hear a voice I had not known. I relieved your shoulder of the burden. Your hands were freed from the basket. In distress you called and I rescued you. I answered you in the secret place of thunder. I tested you at the waters of Meribah. Hear, O my people, while I admonish you. O Israel, if you would but listen to me, there shall be no strange God among you. You shall not bow down to a foreign God. I am the Lord your God who brought you up out of the land of Egypt. Open your mouth wide and I will fill it. But my people did not listen to my voice. Israel would not submit to me. So I gave them over to their stubborn hearts to follow their own counsels. Oh, that my people would listen to me, that Israel would walk in my ways. Then I would quickly subdue their enemies and turn my hand against their foes. Those who hate the Lord would cringe before him and their doom would last forever. I would feed you with the finest of wheat and with honey from the rock I would satisfy you. Those are God's words from Psalm 81. Our music today comes from An Evening in December. Joy, 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 joy to the world, the Lord is come. Let earth receive her King. Let every heart prepare Him rule. And heaven and nature sing. Heaven and nature sing.
a cut from An Evening in December, we'll have another song from them at the end of the program. Stay tuned for that. Turn with me, if you can, to the Gospel of John, to John chapter 1, verses 1 through 18. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things came into being through him, and without him not one thing came into being. What has come into being in him was life. And the life was the light of all people. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not overcome it. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify to the light, so that all might believe through him. He himself was not the light, but he came to testify to the light. The true light, which enlightens everyone, was coming into the world. Jesus was in the world, and the world came into being through him, yet the world did not know him. He came to what was his own, and his own people did not accept him. But to all who received him, who believed in his name, he gave power to become children of God, who were born not of blood, or of the will of the flesh, or of the will of man, but of God. And the word became flesh and lived among us, and we have seen his glory, the glory as of a father's only son, full of grace and truth. John testified to him and cried out, This is he of whom I said, He who comes after me ranks ahead of me because he was before me. From his fullness we have all received grace upon grace. The law indeed was given through Moses. Grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. No one has ever seen God. It is God the only Son who is close to the Father's heart who has made him known. Those are God's words from John chapter 1 verses 1 through 18. Well, it's Christmas time again. Have you been out to see a good movie? Or do you have your own favorite holiday movie that you and your family watch every year? Well, for me, my favorite Christmas movie is Scrooge. Now, there are about a bazillion different movie versions of Charles Dickens' A Christmas Carol, ones with chipmunks or Tory Spelling or animated animals. But my favorite is the musical version starring Albert Finney called Scrooge. I just love the songs in that show. I also am impressed by the imagery of hell and eternity that that movie Scrooge shows. Have you heard the music 
thank you very much. Thank you very much. That's the nicest thing that anyone's ever done for me. I won't sing it for you, but it's a great song, especially when the people in the streets are dancing and jumping. The song is very upbeat. It happens when the ghost of Christmas future has taken poor Ebenezer off to see what is to come. He sees the people rejoicing and singing thank you very much throughout the street in front of his house. They are all singing and rejoicing and saying thank you very much because Scrooge has died. So what is your favorite holiday movie? Is it one of the movies like Tim Allen's The Santa Claus Movies? Or perhaps his latest Christmas with the Cranks? Or is it Arnold Schwarzenegger in Jingle All the Way? Or is it one of the older movies, the classic holiday movies? Is your favorite It's a Wonderful Life with Jimmy Stewart? You remember that movie, It's a Wonderful Life? George Bailey is rather upset and discouraged. He's ready to end his life and almost jumps off a bridge when Clarence enters the situation. Clarence, played by Henry Travers, is an angel. This angel has been sent to help George Bailey and answer to prayer. Now, before we get too far into the story, It's a Wonderful Life, I must insert that while angels are real, I see no biblical evidence that people become angels after death. Clarence talks about his life on earth. It's just Hollywood fluff. People live once and then face judgment and spend eternity in heaven or hell. People do not become angels. But that aside, you remember the movie? George Bailey is shown what life would have been like had he never been born. And it is a profound consideration. What would life be like for you or the people around you if you had never been born? Christmas is all about the birth of Jesus Christ, our Master and Messiah. So what would have happened had Jesus never been born? Well, nearly all of modern society would be different. Just about every hospital was founded by Christians who wanted to seek to help the sick and injured. Had Jesus never been born, there would be no Christians to found hospitals. Most of the great pillars of science were devoted Christians who studied science to gain more of an understanding of God's creation. So if Jesus had never been born, there would be no Christians, so there would not be as quickly an advance of science. So you see, by being born in that stable in Bethlehem, Jesus came and changed everything. So I would advance that with Jesus, it is a wonderful life. So what is your favorite Christmas movie? Are you planning on taking your kids to a movie this Christmas? That sure can be a fun family time. Or are you planning on giving a DVD or a video to someone as a Christmas gift? Will it be a copy of your favorite Christmas movie? Will it be a copy of the movie Elf? Now that is one funny movie. Will Ferrell plays the part of Buddy the Adopted Elf. Bob Newhart plays the part of Papa Elf. It is hilarious. Buddy is really a man who was raised by North Pole elves. Apparently, South Pole elves are mean. Buddy, however, is a human and not an elf. And in that movie Elf, there are a great many references back to other holiday favorites. As Buddy leaves the North Pole and searches for his adopted real uh, for his real father, he says goodbye to the North Pole puppets. It reminded me of all those Rudolph and Snowman videos. It's very funny. Yes, indeed. We are blessed as a society to have so many entertainment choices. We are blessed to have so much stuff. At Christmas, we really should be thankful. For the real Christmas story is about Jesus being born in the manger in Bethlehem. The shepherds come to visit the stable after the angels announce to them, Do not be afraid, for see, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all the people. To you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign for you. You will find a child wrapped in bands of cloth and lying in a manger. Then suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth peace among those whom he favors. We also know the real Christmas story had the wise men traveling to see the newborn king. Wise men from the east came and found Jesus with Mary and Joseph, The wise men presented gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. Those real stories come from the Gospels of Matthew and Luke. John tells it in a different perspective. John describes the spiritual in more detail. Describing spiritual things can be rather tough. 
As background for the Christmas story, John tells us, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. Now this is very similar to the opening lines of the Bible in the book of Genesis, which reads, In the beginning when God created. John here is linking Jesus back with creation. As we read in 1 Corinthians 8, verse 6, For us there is one God, the Father, from whom all things and for whom we exist, and one Lord, Jesus Christ, through whom are all things and through whom we exist. God exists as three in one. That is known as the Trinity, God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. John helps us to understand that truth. All things came into being through Jesus. And without Jesus, not one thing came into being. What has come into being in him was life, and the life was the light of all people. God exists as three in one. It is sometimes hard to fathom, but it is true. Let me give you an example. I can be described as John the husband, John the father, and John the weird radio preacher. And this does not mean that there are three of me, heaven help us. It just means that there are three ways in which people know me. It is sort of like that for God. God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Christmas is also about when, as John describes it, the Word became flesh and lived among us. And we have seen his glory, the glory as of a Father's only Son, full of grace and truth. Jesus came and lived with us as the Word that was made flesh, God and man combined into one. Christmas at its core is a huge miracle, but only rarely do we hear about that miracle in our holiday videos. So what is your favorite holiday video? Is it that classic Miracle on 34th Street? In that movie, The Miracle on 34th Street, the original 1947 version, we see and follow the misadventures of Kris Kringle, played expertly by Edmund Gwynn, as he gets a job playing Santa Claus at Macy's Department Store in New York City. Young Natalie Wood is the little girl who tells him she doesn't believe in Santa. And Maureen O'Hara and John Payne are the couple who help Kris Kringle through a trial in which he must prove that he is that jolly fellow from the North Pole, Santa Claus. It's a really sweet movie. It is also a favorite Christmas movie for many people. Is that your Christmas favorite? Yes, in our society, we are blessed, truly blessed, to have such prosperity. But what of other societies? In the book, The House of the Dead, by Fyodor Dostoevsky, he describes a Christmas that few of us can really relate to. It is about a Christmas where there were no holiday videos, no trips to the mall, no family time at Christmas, no theaters. It describes the time of Christmas at a Siberian work camp. It was a dreary little settlement in the bleak, frozen wilderness. The grim prison sat at one end of the little main street. As the prisoners sat in their stark cells, they could look out through the bars and see a small church building, they called it a cathedral, which sat on the small hill on the other side of town. Dawn came to the work camp on that Christmas. The bells in the church rang out. It was the Christmas service. One of the prisoners commented, but not for us, who are cut off from all humanity. The prisoners cried and huddled together for warmth. Sometime later, after the bells had stopped, the minister came into the prison yard and set up a rough altar. He began to do a Christmas service. Now God has come to us, shouted one of the prisoners. The minister replied, This is where he lives all year long. You see, he only goes to the cathedral on special occasions. So have you appreciated how good you have it this Christmas? If you are able to sit in a warm home and have holiday videos on your TV, please give thanks to God. For with Jesus, it is a wonderful life. Is your favorite holiday video a Christmas story? You remember little Ralph and his quest to get the Red Ryder BB gun? As his adventure progresses, more and more people warn him, "Uh, you'll shoot your eye out. Now, I apologize to those of you who liked that movie. But I remember some BB gun tales from my own youth, and I do not remember them so fondly. So a movie about the Red Ryder BB gun just does not trip my holiday trigger. Pardon the pun. Now, of all the holiday movies that are out, do you ever ask yourself, 
Why is Jesus left out so often? Except for the Charlie Brown's Christmas special and the Little Drummer Boy, there are very few holiday movies that speak about Jesus. You know that song, The Little Drummer Boy? I think was best sung by Larry Matthews as Richie Petri on the Dick Van Dyke Show back in the early 60s. But despite those few, Jesus is usually left out of Christmas programs. Can you imagine hosting a birthday party and not inviting the birthday boy? Most holiday shows have snowmen and reindeer and elves and the spirits of Christmas past, present, and future. Of course, the most popular holiday figure is jolly old Santa Claus, Kris Kringle, Father Christmas, or Saint Nick. But do you know where Saint Nick originated? No, it's not at the North Pole. The true story of Santa Claus begins with a real-life kid named Nicholas. Legends tell us that he was born about the year 250 A.D. or so in a small village in what is now modern Turkey. His wealthy parents were Christians who raised him to be a serious and believing Christian, but those faithful parents died in an epidemic while Nicholas was a child. Nicholas wanted to be a Christian, so he studied God's word. Knowing Jesus' words to sell what you own and give the money to the poor, Nicholas used his whole inheritance to assist the needy, the sick, and the suffering. He dedicated his life to serving God. In those days, a young woman's father had to offer prospective husbands something of value, a dowry. It was a sad time for women. A large dowry would attract a better quality suitor, and therefore the young woman would find a better quality husband. But without a dowry, a woman was unlikely to ever marry. It was possible that that young woman might even be slow, sold into slavery. Well, needless to say, a poor man's daughter's futures were bleak. But on many different occasions, a bag of gold appeared in poor homes, providing the needed dowries. The bags of gold tossed through an open window were said to have landed in stockings or on shoes left before the fire to dry. This secretly delivered gift was the work of Nicholas. This led to the custom of children hanging stockings or putting out shoes, eagerly awaiting gifts from St. Nicholas. Another time, three Bible students were on their way to study in Athens. A vicious and crooked innkeeper robbed them and tied them up. He intended to sell the young men as slaves to slave traders. At about the same time, Nicholas was on a journey on that very road. He stopped at that inn. In the night, he dreamed of the crime, got up and summoned the innkeeper. Nicholas prayed earnestly to God. The innkeeper was so smitten with grief that he confessed and led Nicholas to the kidnapped men who were then set free. The legend states that the innkeeper became a Christian. Nicholas became known throughout the land for his generosity to those in need, his love for God, his love for children, and his concern for sailors and ships. Under the Roman emperor Diocletian, who ruthlessly persecuted Christians, Nicholas suffered for his faith, was exiled and imprisoned. The prisons were full of Christians, so full that there was not room for the real criminals, the murderers, the thieves, or the robbers. But after his release, Nicholas attended the Christian Council of Nicaea in 325 AD, and that is where we got the Nicene Creed. Nicholas died about December 6th, AD 343, in Myra, and was buried in his cathedral church. The anniversary of his death became a day of celebration. And this is one of the factors that helped Middle Ages Christians to pick December 25th as the time to celebrate the birth of Jesus. The real Saint Nick died December 6th. We really do not know when Jesus was born. We do know that he was born to the Virgin Mary in Bethlehem, and that was the greatest Christmas ever. Well, back to that movie, It's a Wonderful Life. It's my wife's favorite Christmas movie. Do you remember when George Bailey was sitting in despair and said, God, God, dear Father in heaven, I'm not a praying man, but if you're up there and you can hear me, show me the way. I'm at the end of my rope. Show me the way, God. It's a very moving scene. Well, the actor Jimmy Stewart said that was a moving scene and a moment for him as well. Remembering when he had played George Bailey, he said, As I said those words, I felt the loneliness, the hopelessness of people who had nowhere to turn, and my eyes filled with tears. I broke down sobbing. This was not planned at all. But the power of that prayer, the realization that our Father in Heaven is there to help the hopeless, had reduced me to tears. 
So as you watch holiday videos and go to the movies, remember that one day you too will be faced with eternity. It will probably be not like any of the movies. You may not be like Ebenezer Scrooge and have three spirits warn you before it's too late. You might not have any warning at all. In fact, right now, this morning might be your last warning. Are you right with Jesus? Have you ever asked Jesus into your heart? Have you confessed your sins and sought Jesus as Lord and Savior? Are you a Christian inside as well as outside? Have you studied the Bible and sought to live righteously? Remember, only Jesus can get you to heaven. And that is what we need to remember this Christmas. That is the best story ever told. In the book, The Twelve Daises of Christmas, Charlene Anna Bombeck relates how Christmas can sometimes be for people. Normally, Charlene was all excited for Christmas. She was normally into the holiday spirit. One afternoon, she and her two grown sons were at the mall, and on a whim, they decided to get their pictures taken with Santa as a gift for her husband. So they saw Santa sitting on a bench, and they approached him and asked him if they could take the photo. Santa agreed. The friendly Santa sat for the photo and then asked, Nan, what do you, little girl, want for Christmas? Well, without realizing what she was saying, she blurted out, Oh, Santa, I'm having surgery next week, and I'd really like a swift healing. For a bit, Carolyn was shocked by her own openness. Santa looked deeply into her eyes and said, I'll pray for you, and so will Mrs. Claus. Now that's what we need to be doing this Christmas. We need to be looking to Jesus, turning to Jesus, and focusing our eyes on Jesus. For with Jesus, it is a wonderful life. I'm John Thornton. Thanks for listening to Radio Good News. I encourage you to seek out a church family where you can celebrate Christmas this year, for this area offers many fine Bible-believing and teaching churches of various denominations. May you richly know the blessings of the God who was, the God who is, and the God who is to come again. We'll finish today with a track from An Evening in December. <laughs>